Hello everybody. I'm so glad that you're here for our little Bible study today. This is sort of a special study and I hope that you're all going to be really teachable because some of this information is a little bit difficult to accept and um, it's really for very mature believers and so um, I hope that I can present it really simple and clear to everybody so that you can get this information um, and understand it. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Holy Father God, we thank you that we are accepted in your beloved Son. And we thank you that we're part of your plan to glorify and exalt your Son, Jesus Christ, for all eternity. And we pray, Lord, that this little Bible lesson today would um, exalt your Son and glorify Him and your Word and um, in the King James Bible and um, edify the believers. And I pray, Lord, um, as a, a thank you to you that Christ has died for our sins and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures so that anyone who believes this can be saved. You've made um, your plan of salvation so easy and simple and I hope that many people will trust on you and that you have made a way that the body of Christ in the mystery can also be saved and we thank you lord in jesus name amen amen okay so this is going to be a study um that i'm going to tell you how i'm i do it so that you can do the same also there will not be any notes on this video so uh, because they're all going to be available on amazon in a little booklet that has the title of this message uh, for $3.99 for the paperback and $2.99 for the Kindle. So um, there won't be any notes, so you might want to take notes. So we'll start with our little pointer stick. Well, I'll use, I'll use a wooden spoon. The title of the message is, Why Was the Earth Without Form, Void, and Dark? in Genesis 1-2. And this little booklet that has this same title by me is available on Amazon.com. So I've always wanted to understand from God's Word how God made the universe. I finally understand it much better since I read this book called Creation in the Beginning by Gary Paul Miller. It's an excellent book, and with this video, I will let you know how you can order it from Grace Harbor Church. And he is the one that really explains this whole thing that I'm teaching you so simply and systematically and clearly. And his book is laid out in a very organized way with very good pictures, simple drawings to help us understand. He goes step by step. And I highly recommend this book. There's no price on the book. It, they go by donation only. So I hope that you will get this book. And um, I'm going to summarize and condense the book in this study today. Then I'm going to add some more information. His book is 200 pages and you can't really put it down once you start. And I am so grateful to one of my Facebook friends who urged me to read the book, which I already had in my library, but I hadn't actually read it. So once I started, I couldn't put it down, and I just spent, you know, I finished it in, in less than a week. And I think that you um, would really benefit from this book. Okay, so, um, that's, again, Creation in the Beginning by Gary Paul Miller. Okay, we'll put that there. All right, so um, this is one of the drawings that he has in the book. 
he says eternity. Then he makes a simple house, and he calls that heaven. Patty, are you watching? Mm -hmm. And then the earth. So we're going to go over in our study, we're going to go over um, eternity, heaven, and earth. We're going to go over those three parts. And um, we're going to explain Genesis chapter 2, what, I mean chapter 1, verse 2, by looking at other scripture in the Bible to fill in what actually happened there. But first I'm going to show you a simple model of, um, of this drawing. And then you will notice that we are going to have um, the earth standing out of the water and in the water, like this. And that's what I'm going to model for you. And then we're also going to talk about today exactly when exactly did Adam and Eve sin. Okay, that's another thing that we're going to talk about. And that information I got from Richard Jordan. Um, and so um, this little timetable here is going to help us figure that out. And then we're going to also talk about, you know, did Satan actually come to Eve in the form of a serpent. And we're going to find out that that's highly unlikely. So what form did Satan come to Eve in? We're going to cover that. Um, so let's get going. Let just put this out of the way. Okay, so in Genesis um, 2-3, we read that God created and made. We're going to go over that verse in a little while. So, to create is to make something out of nothing. And then to make is to, uh, you know, make something from something. Oh. So, God also brought forth from the old creation, we're going to find as we study this. So, the seven days of creation go like this in a nutshell, okay? On day one, God divides light and darkness. Now, we're going to find that the light was good. Hmm. He doesn't say the darkness was good, okay? Hmm. He's very, God is very specific and clear in His Word. He says the light was good. Now, day two... God divides water from the waters. So he makes um, the heaven around the earth and the heavenly places, which is really, we call outer space. And he doesn't say it's good. Day two was not good. And we're going to talk about why that was. Then day three, God divides the dry land from the seas, and that was good. Day four, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars, and that was good. Day five, God creates birds and sea creatures and great whales, and that was good. Day six, God brought forth animals and created mankind, and, and that was very good. And then day seven, God rested. So that's the days of creation. Okay, we can actually leave that up. So, here is my um, simple model of heaven. Okay, so we're going to explain this simple model. And then we're going to, you know, talk about the verses that say, you know, what this model is later. So, God stretched forth the heaven... Um, he, God was in eternity. So outside of this box is eternity. Okay? Then God made a space in eternity. And he made north and south and east and west. He made directions mm. and dimensions. He carved out a spot mm. in that eternity. And once he had that spot, he... Um, made a 
a casing of ice. Um, he made the foundation, the, the pillars, and then we're going to see that the roof is going to be the beams. So he stretched out the heaven as a tent for him to live in. So God, who lives in eternity, made a, a, a heaven for him to live in, to dwell in. And we're going to see that verse in Isaiah 40, 22. We're going to look at that later. So once he had that um, casing of ice, encapsulation, he... Um, he made the earth and he hung it on nothing. You see how that, I had to hang it on something because I'm not God. But he hung it on nothing. Hmm. Okay? And he made, um, he made everything in this order. First he made heaven, then he made the angels, and then he made the earth. Because the angels shouted for joy when God made the earth. And so they have ha had to pre-exist. Okay, and, and not only, he didn't only make the angels, he made the angelic creatures. Cherubs have four wings, seraphims have six wings, and angels have no wings. Okay, so, somehow, okay, somehow um, the earth was, remember, it became dark, and, mm -hmm. and formless and mm -hmm. void. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what happened? What went wrong? Because God made everything perfect in the beginning, and He always does everything perfect. And remember that the darkness was not good. It was the light that was good. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, try to explain that with this little model we have here. So <clears throat> what happened was that... Um, God, remember we had these walls of ice? Mm -hmm. God destroyed what he had made, and he let these ice walls melt. So I'm going to put in water because I can't melt those ice walls. So I'm going to put in hot water. Okay, so we have hot water in there. Then we have here, we have the earth, and I rolled it in um, egg white, and then I covered it with coffee crystals. So you can do that same thing, okay, to make the earth dark. So we're going to put the earth in here, in the dark. Uh oh, there we go. And see how the waters became dark mm -hmm. from the dirt on the earth? And see how the earth is now standing in the water and out of the water. Mm -hmm. Now this is, we know this is not the same as um, when we had Noah's flood. Because Noah's flood was just around the earth. Mm -hmm. um, and it was not with the earth standing in and out of the water. As mm -hmm. we will see what Peter said in 2 Peter. Mm -hmm. Okay, he, he describes that. This, is, this okay. was before. Yeah, so the, the earth was formless and without void. Um, okay, so the, the, the earth was um, without form. So it sort of you know, got waterlogged. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, yeah, see how I squeeze it? Mm -hmm. It took on water. It was, you know, waterlogged. And the dirt on the earth made the water dirty. And then <clears throat> what God did was he, this is how he judged the old world, okay? So what God did was he um, put a dark cloud um, in there. So that's why I have the dark on the back of this lid. Can you see that, Patty? Dark mm -hmm. lid. So mm -hmm. when you do that, you put the dark cloud under the separation that he's going to make for the third heaven now. Then the bottom of the third heaven, can you see that, Penny? Mm -hmm. Becomes like a mirror. Oh. Okay? Because you have the dark underneath, that's how we make mirrors today. Mm -hmm. that's so right. the ground on God's side is like a beautiful mirror. 
-hmm. <laughs> on the other side, okay, so God walled off um, and made the third heaven from the rest of, of, of heaven. Because, oh. um, so, and God was in there, and so that made this whole area dark because God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And so God put his light up here, and this whole area became dark. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then, without God being there, um, in this part, compartment, he had, he had, you know, withdrawn himself into the third heaven. So then, once the earth was void of any inhabitants, and those inhabitants was actually um, Satan and his angels. Once it was void of those inhabitants, because it be God it made it so uninhabitable, then God decided to come back into the compartment from the third compartment, or third heaven, and he came back in, and then he took, brought his light back in. Okay, and he said, let there be light. And that light was good because God is light. Okay, so that's how we had the light come back in on day one. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to fast forward because I might not be able to get to this um, later. Okay, so we know that at one point um, there's a door in the third heaven and at one point, uh, the Apostle John goes up into the third heaven and he looks and he sees, you know, the seven years of tribulation. He sees the return of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. at his second coming. He sees the 1,000 year reign. He sees the great white throne. And he sees the, you know, new earth and the new heaven. So. I don't know if God has a command center where, you know, he can see the end from the beginning and how John was able to see that. So I don't understand everything. Mm -hmm. And there's something more that I don't understand. Okay, so <laughs> this is a model right here of, um, of the tabernacle. And I think that somehow... The tabernacle is a model of um, heaven. And I don't understand fully how that works, mm -hmm. but this is a model that I made with my children when I was homeschooling. So the, the tabernacle sits in the courtyard mm -hmm. and it has a most holy place separated by a curtain. Mm -hmm. And then it has um, the holy place and the most holy place. So somehow I believe that the tabernacle is a model of, um, of heaven, but I don't understand exactly how. Okay, and so it was on, the, on that little tabernacle they had a little cover, a little mm -hmm. tent cover. See, Patty? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's just something I wanted to bring out. Okay. <clears throat> Now we're going to fast forward from the Apostle John all the way to, um, you know, when God is going to be sitting on the great white throne judgment. So he, um, I, you know, in, in the third heaven is the new Jerusalem. So the new Jerusalem is up there. Mm -hmm. So Peter says that uh, God is going to burn up the, uh, the earth and the heavens at the end. And so I believe that the ice walls protect the heavens from being burnt up by the friction of eternity. So somehow when uh, God will, you know, roll things back around the heaven, there the friction will, you know, cause fire to burn up heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. But all the believers have to be up here in the third heaven where they're protected. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
And so God will have them protected. So then I believe that once um, we have the, the new heaven, the new heaven, right, that has been renovated, that um, God will have all of his um, people who will dwell on the earth come down in the uh, new Jerusalem to the new earth. And that, I, I think, um, is what's going to happen. But, you know, some of this is conjecture on my part and from just, you know, an educated guess. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to happen. And then um, the rest of us who um, are part of the body of Christ will fill, you know, those places that um, are now occupied by Satan and his angels. Because mm -hmm. God cannot leave a vacuum. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said that once, um, you know, a, a human being is swept and garnished, mm -hmm. if, it's, if it doesn't have Jesus Christ come into that place, mm -hmm. then, you know, uh, seven worse demons or devils will mm -hmm. come in. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why God left the, you know, Satan and his angels in the heavenly places to fill those positions so it wouldn't be a vacuum and be made even worse than it already is. And we're going to fill those places in the middle of the tribulation when Satan and his angels get cast out of the second heaven where they are now. Okay, so um, let's uh, get a little into our study now. I'm going to move this. So, um, before we get going, I just want to show you some of the books that we've written. God's Secret is about the mystery, the formation of the body of Christ, and that's in color, and it's um, on Amazon.com. Um, Romans, a commentary, is also there. So that would be the next book to read. 1 Corinthians would come in that after that. 2 Corinthians after that, and then Galatians. Um, I also have Treasure Hunt Volume 1, which is, I have, well, Maureen and Patty have helped me with the proofreading and also Aaron Grace. And um, this is commentary only, no introductory information of Romans to Galatians. And the way I, I do it is I, oh, there's a picture of, um, of the cherub, Satan, mm -hmm. is that I, I do bold of the of, uh, verses of God, and then I do uh, the commentary with not bold. Mm -hmm. And we have Ephesians, we have um, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, and um, that this is a new book. It's available on Amazon. And we also have another new book, which is um, Treasure Hunt, Volume 2, which is the prison epistles of Paul, Paul's prison epistles. So that's the same thing, no introductory information, just a commentary. And I do that to keep your cost low. Then we also come out with a children's book called Just As God Said, because Everything is going to be just as God said. And um, the red one has color pictures. And it's a, like God's secret in a you know, simple way for children. And um, then we have it also in black and white to have it in a uh, less expensive format. So that people can, for the price of a cup of coffee at Starbucks, give this out to their friends at a reduced cost. Okay, now, God's secret and um, just as God said, are both made for the Kindle. So I just want to show you how you can set, okay, here's just as God said, I don't know if you, if it's too glary, but, um, you know, you can put your Kindle and you can get different size Kindle on um, text to read. Okay, so um, okay. Then once you have it, 
Okay, I'm, I'm trying to get it on text to read. Where, where, where did it, where'd it go? Okay, I want you to hear it. Uh oh. Where is it? Okay. I don't hear it. The volume? I have the volume on. There you go. Oh. So that's just it. Text to read. Yeah. Okay. I want I want them to hear it though. Why is it not playing? the whole thing. Is it a How lady's voice? How long did it take you to listen to the whole thing? I, I didn't time it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but anyway, you can listen to the whole thing being read to you um, on either, um, you know, Just As God Said, the children's book, or God's Secret. Those have both been formatted, especially for being read to you, you just have to go into your settings and put it on text to speech, oh, and um, just take my word for it. So let's get going with our study. To speech. Uh, Patty, can you please follow me here, honey? Sure. Just yeah, follow me oh, over okay. here. Over here. Right. There you go. Okay. Keep going. Okay. All right. So. Uh, turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to first talk about um, eternity. Before God created, before he made anything, he was in eternity. God lives in eternity. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth, that's E-T-H, which is present tense, eternity, whose name is holy. That's Isaiah fifty-seven fifteen. Write that down. Eternity is outside creation. It is not within creation. Eternity is not heaven because heaven was created. Eternity existed before God made anything. Eternity is different from creation. It is called everlasting. It has no beginning, no end. God's creation is within eternity. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Mm -hmm. Psalm 90, verse 2. Mm -hmm. When Moses asked God what his name was, he said, I am that I am, Exodus three fourteen. God is ever present. He is eternal. He said, I am. God exists. He does not change. God is outside of time. There is only one God, and there is not any other. God said, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Isaiah 43, 10b. Is there a God besides me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Isaiah 44, 8. God said, For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Isaiah 46, 9b. Time only exists within the creation he made. God is outside time, place, and what he has made. God can see the end from the beginning, declaring the end from the beginning, Isaiah 46, 10. God made a place in eternity for his creation. He created north, south, east, and west. Psalm 89, 12, 103, 12. God created things in this order. God made heaven, then he made the angels and other angelic creatures, then he made the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1.1. Please note that many modern Bibles put an S after heaven, making it more than one heaven, which is false. If you have such a Bible, throw it away. 
God's perfect preserved words are found in the King James Bible. God created a single heaven. It was God's purpose to be one with his creation, to have no barriers between himself and his creation. God created heaven and earth by wisdom. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding he has established the heavens. Proverbs 3.19 Heaven. Now we're going to talk about heaven. God made a space in eternity and created directions, north, south, east, and west. And God spread heaven out like a curtain for a tent for him to live in. Okay, so remember we had the tent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a tent is three-dimensional, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a three-dimensional uh, uh, place. Mm -hmm. So it says in Isaiah 40, 22, that stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spread them as a tent to dwell in. Mm -hmm. So it was God's idea that he wanted to dwell in his creation, in mm -hmm. heaven. So here he, he's saying that he wants to dwell in heaven. This tent has height, width, length, three dimensions. The tent is made of frozen ice to keep it separate from eternity and cool. It has a bottom, foundation, sides, pillars, and roof, beams. David sang about the foundation of heaven, 2 Samuel 22, 8. God has encapsulated the entire heaven in a frozen shell. The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Job 38, 30. It was God's breath that froze the waters. By the breath of God, frost is given, and the breath of the waters, and the breath, breath of the waters is straightened. Job 37, 10. Number two, God next created the angels, which are also called morning stars, sons of God, host of heaven, and in Daniel 4.17, they are called watchers and other heavenly creatures. Angels, like I said, have no wings. Cherubs have four wings. Seraphims have six wings. God created many different heavenly creatures. The angels must have been created before the earth since the sons of God shouted for joy when God laid the foundation and cornerstone of the earth. God asked Job, Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Remember he, he hung the earth mm -hmm. in, on nothing? Mm -hmm. And who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shout, shouted for joy. That's Job 38, 4 through 7. Now we're going to talk about the earth. Okay. <laughs> Here's a little earth. Okay. God created the earth for him to live in. Okay, this is the verse that says so. Isaiah 45, 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain, not for, it, not for no reason. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Isaiah 45, 18. Now we can compare that with Isaiah 40, 22. It said that he was going to dwell in heaven. So God has two places that he's going to dwell in. He's going to dwell in heaven, and he's going to dwell on the earth. God created the earth and hung it on nothing. He stretched out the north over empty, the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Job 26, 7. Trouble in heaven. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the water. Genesis 1, 2. Why was the earth without form and void? What had happened? This is not how God had made earth in the beginning, when the angels 
saw the earth, it was light, and they shouted with joy. Mm -hmm. God had already made earth, water, darkness, space, and the elements before Genesis 1-2. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because we find it this way. We find all these things in Genesis 1-2. We find the heaven and the earth beneath the third heaven filled with water and darkness. But what went, was wrong? Why was there darkness? Why was there darkness? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I spelled there the wrong way. Okay. God always makes things perfect the first time, and he is light. God, who is light, had left his tent, heaven, made darkness, and drowned the earth, Yikes! But why? God had a plan to deal with Satan and his rebellion and restore what was lost. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Genesis 1-2. So here we have the Spirit of God coming back into the compartment that had water. After God made heaven and earth, something very wrong happened. We can use verses in the rest of the Bible to help us to know what happened. I have learned so much from uh, the Schofield Study Bible and also from the book that I told you about. Um, it's the best book I've ever, ever read on the subject, Creation in the Beginning by Gary Paul Miller. I stand on these men's shoulders. I have condensed Mr. Miller's book in that had the 200 pages, and I want to share this truth uh, that I have learned with you so you can have the joy of knowing what God has done, is doing, and will do, and this understanding of this peace really adds so much dimension to our understanding of the entire Bible, so that's why I want you to get it. Hmm. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 1 John 1.5 God had left the second heaven, withdrew himself, took his light with him, and walled off the third heaven by a sea of glass. He put a dark cloud under the sea so that no one could see or go into the third heaven without being invited. So that dark cloud is found in Job 22, 12 through 14. Our time is limited, so I can't go to all the verses. And so... Um, John the Apostle was invited in Revelation 4, 6 to come up to the third heaven. So it made a mirror on God's side, and God said, Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, as a molten looking glass? Hmm. That's in Job 37, 18. The third heaven has a door, as we find out in Revelation 4, 1. Only Paul called it the third heaven in 2 Corinthians 12, 2. Moses and Solomon and others called it the heaven of heavens. Okay? The heaven of heavens. Okay? And that was in Deuteronomy 10, 14 and 1 Kings 8, 27. Peter said that God destroyed the old earth with water, then remade it and will destroy the current earth with fire. This is a quote. All things continue as they were from the beginning of cr the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in stored, store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Second Peter 3, 4 through 7. So I copied um, the cover picture, if you can see the earth standing in the water and out of the water, that was on... Um, uh, Gary Paul Miller's book because I couldn't find another picture that was as good like that. So it was standing in the water, uh, standing out of the water and in the water. 
This flood included the heavens of old. Because the earth was in it. How do we know Peter is not talking about Noah's flood? Noah's flood only affected the whole face of the earth. The earth was never standing in and out of the water. No, standing out of the water and in the water during Noah's flood. How did God overflow the old heavens and the old earth so that they perished? After withdrawing himself, God let some of the walls of ice around the heaven melt and, the fl and flood the container. The dirt on the earth made the water dark. The heaven was dark without God's light. When the earth was void of inhabitants and empty, God's Spirit returned and moved upon the face of the water. The earth was void of creatures. Satan and his angels, who were on earth, were not on it anymore. Satan said his five I wills from earth. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. So he's talking about ascending into heaven, so he's standing on earth. Mm -hmm. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sights of the north. Okay, that mount may be in the second heaven. Um, I don't know for sure. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. Satan's lie to himself was the deification of the creature. That's the lie program. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to see that that's the same lie he told to Eve. That he could be like the most high God. Only God is God. Creatures are created. Only God is the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Only God is from eternity, um, like we saw in Isaiah 57, 15. He is the creator. Created creatures cannot create or be creators. I mean, they cannot be creators. They can create things, but not out of nothing. Okay? They have to use something. The earth was waterlogged, formless. Jeremiah 4, 22 through 28 describes the destruction of Jer that Jeremiah sees after God's wrath and judgment of evil. The words, without form and void, Jeremiah 4, 23, appear again as the prophet predicts the future devastating aftermath of the Babylonian invasion of Judah that has already happened. So he, he says that, you know, he, you know, it was void because... It was without form. It was, everything was burnt down. It was void because all the inhabitants were gone. So we can use these words to help us to understand what happened in Genesis uh, 1, 2. Jesus told us about Satan when he spoke to the evil religious leaders in Israel. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your fathers ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for, of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8:44. Satan was a murderer from the beginning. He wanted Adam and Eve to die. He lied to them, to himself, and to the angels. Satan sinned, and um, that. Uh, Jesus will destroy um, the devil's work. Mm -hmm. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. That's in 1 John 3.8. Jesus became a man so he could win on the cross by being the perfect sacrifice for our sins and destroy the power of Satan. He is our Savior. God's plan for heaven and earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God made creatures to live in two places, heaven and earth. 
God wanted his creatures to love him and trust him because they wanted to, not because they had to. God didn't make them robots. God decided to give his creatures free will. In a very short time, there was trouble in heaven and trouble on earth. But God was not surprised. He had a plan in place in case of trouble. How did trouble begin in heaven? The very first creature to sin was Lucifer, the light bearer a beautiful cherub that covered God's throne in heaven, Isaiah 14, 12. God had created Lucifer perfect. Lucifer was in charge of making beautiful music to worship God. Lucifer decided that he wanted to be worshipped like God. Lucifer had a plot. He talked one-third of the angels into following him by promising to make them rulers in his kingdom. Cherubs, like Lucifer, have wings and angels do not. God told Lucifer, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Ezekiel 28.15 Iniquity is evil. Evil began in the heart of Satan, not in the heart of God. Spiritual darkness comes from Satan. God told him that the selling of his plan to the angels had made Lucifer violent within. God said, By the multitude of thy merchandising, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Ezekiel 28.16 Many of the angels that Satan convinced to join him held top positions in heaven. Gabriel said to that only Michael was with him in the truth of what God said. I will show ye, this is what Gabriel told Daniel, which is noted in the scriptures of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. Daniel 10, 21. Michael is the prince of the angels for Israel, the great prince which standeth for the children of Israel. Uh, no, children of thy people, Israel. That's in Daniel twelve ten. God said he would cast Lucifer out from where God ruled in heaven. I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O cherub, O covering cherub. 20, um, Ezekiel 28, 16. Jesus Christ said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. In Luke 10, 18. Satan was lifted up with pride. God said, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. That's the ground on the earth. Ezekiel twenty-eight seventeen. Satan probably sinned shortly after being created. Satan was a novice that corrupted his own thinking because of pride. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. 1 Timothy 3.6 God promised that he would destroy Lucifer in Ezekiel 28.18 and 19. God changed Lucifer's name to Satan. Satan means adversary or enemy. He was has other names too, like the devil, the great dragon, the old serpent. In Revelation 12.9 we see those names. To stop any more angels from disobeying him, God created a big trash can called the Lake of Fire. God prepared the place of everlasting fire for the devil and his bad angels. The everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, 14, 41, 25, 41. God cast Satan and the bad angels into the second heaven and to the ground. God sealed off his third heaven with a thick layer of ice, as mentioned in Job 38.30. The second heaven is not clean in God's sight, as mentioned in Job 15.15. God let Satan and his angels be there for now because an empty vacuum is not good and invites worse trouble. Matthew 12.44 Notice that also God knew what was in Satan's heart, that iniquity was there. Because God is all-knowing. He knows, you know, what's in our heart. He knows mm -hmm. our thoughts and intents. He knows our, what we're thinking. 
He knows everything. He's our creator. The good angels in heaven decided not to be bad. But Satan and the bad angels were now in the second heaven. In fact, they are still in the heavenly places today. So there was trouble in heaven, and soon there would be trouble on earth. Satan was mad. He decided to take as many others with him to the big trash can that he could. Satan is against everything that God does, but God is wiser and stronger than Satan. God also uses Satan to do his bidding. Job 1.12 is an example of that. God uses Satan to find out who really believes God. Believe, faith, and trust all mean the same thing. Faith is believing what God says. God decided that he would live on earth, as we mentioned in Isaiah 45.18. The earth was without shape and empty. Darkness was over the water, and the Spirit of God moved over the waters. The Son of God spoke everything into being. In seven days, God created and made. Genesis 2-3. Go to Genesis 2-3. Okay, I want you to see these two words. Okay? And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So he created some things and he made other things. Okay, so God is very precise and he expects us to, you know, be um, precise in our reading of his word. And he wants us to see the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, the beautiful earth and everything that was in it is what God had created and made. There is a difference between created and made, as I mentioned before. To create is to make something out of nothing. Made is to make something out of things that already exist. God created three things um, in the beginning. The Lord God created heaven and earth, um, He animal life, and mankind. God made the rest or brought it forth out of the old creation. We read about the seven days in Genesis chapter 1 and beginning of chapter 2. In so we're going to look now at day one. So go to your Bible on Genesis uh, chapter one. Um, and um, we can look at those verses. And we're going to start with verse three pretty soon. But let me, you know, like set it up. God divides light and darkness, day and night. God's light is allowed back into the second heaven God divides his light, physical and spiritual, from darkness, which is physical and spiritual. God may have divided the good angels from the bad at this point. God called the light day with a capital D. It is day to have the light of God. The darkness was night. God counts a day from evening to evening, from sunset to sunset, a day is a complete rotation of the earth on its axis. God made time from man's perspective. God said it was good. The light was good. Remember, God said the light was good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And so read with me in verse 3. And God called the light day. See the capital D? Day. Uh, so it's a capital D for day. Where, where is dark, this again? Verse, um, oh, one. Uh, chapter one? Yeah, chapter one, verse five. We're, we're oh, five. all the way down to five. Oh, okay, now. yeah, capital D. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the darkness he called night, with capital N. Uh -huh. And the evening and the morning were the first day. See, he goes from evening and then morning, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's really evening to evening. Genesis 1, 3 through 5. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. John, 1 John 1, 5. God said, I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. Day 2. Okay, so we're going to be reading uh, along here. God divides the water from the waters, making the first heaven, sky, and the firmament, the second heaven, outer space. Okay? God put the water back into the frozen walls around heaven. Kind of sucked it back in, refroze it into those walls. 
from our container that we had there. Mm -hmm. um, God does not call it, it, it good on the second day here. Most probably Satan and his angels were again able to move around in this space. We are told in the Bible that they are there now in Revelation 12, 7 through 9. And God said, now we're on verse 6, Let the, there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day, Genesis 1, 6 through 8. Day 3, God gathered the water together, and dry land appeared. He called the dry ground earth, and the water ceased. It was good. God let the earth bring forth plants. Now listen to this when I read this. And the trees were big in one day, with fruits and seeds after its kind. Apple trees only produce apples. Verse 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and uh, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth, see, it brought forth mm -hmm. uh, grass. This is, it brought, it's bringing things forth from the old creation. So before he flooded the earth, all these things already were there. Mm -hmm. The herb yielding seed after his kind and the trees yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Day four. God sets lights in the heaven, the sun, moon, and stars, in order to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons, days and years. The stars make up constellations, as we hear in Job 9.9 9 and Isaiah 13, verse 10. There are 12 signs or chambers of the zodiac. One year is a complete circle of the earth around the sun. The idea that the earth is flat is false. It was simply that God often speaks about his creation from the point of view of the earth. God called it good. Furthermore, men from the earth have orbited the earth and the moon and have landed on the moon, returning back to the earth again. Man does not affect the climate on earth. God says that the lights he made affect the climate. Verse 14, And, the God, and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night. Okay. So, I want you to know that God was on the earth when he set the stars. And he set them in a specific way so there would be constellations. Okay. Mm. Um, mm. And divide, okay. Uh, Fermion of heaven, divide the day from the night and let them be for signs. See, there's the signs. Mm -hmm. Those stars are for signs. Mm-hmm and for seasons, and for days, and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and, the, and to rule over the day, and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the first day, fourth day, fourth day. That's Genesis 1, 14 through 19. The heavens display God's wisdom. The heaven declared the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Psalm 19, verse 1. Day 5. God created fully formed mature creatures like great whales and birds to fly above the earth in the sky. The chicken did not come before the egg. I mean, the chicken did come before the egg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I misread that. The chicken oh. did come before the egg. God blessed them and told these creatures to have many babies to fill the water and earth. It was good. Verse 20. 
And God said, let the waters bring forth um, abundantly the moving creatures that hath life and fowls that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living things a living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind and God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth and the evening and the morning were the fifth day Genesis 1 20 through 23 God now we're talking about day six okay this gets really exciting because we're made and mankind is made God let the earth bring forth land animals and it was good then God said let us God is one God in three persons make man in our image man is able to reason and has creative abilities God made male and female God said that they should rule over the things on the earth and make the other creatures obey them God blessed the man and told them to be fruitful and multiply, refill the earth, and rule everything that, God, that moved. God said that every living creature was to eat plants and seeds for food. God said everything he made between day one and day six was very good. Okay, verse 24. And God said... Let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God also created male and female on, in his own image on day six. God said, Let us make man in our image. Because God is one in three persons. Okay, we said that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and God said, let us make man, this is verse 26, in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth on the earth, upon the earth. Okay, so complete dominion. That's Genesis one twenty six through 28. Okay, I'm going to write complete dominion here. Okay, what were Adam and Eve to subdue? They were to subdue their enemy, Satan. But as we shall see, they failed. Instead, they were taken in by him. Meat means food. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree, in which is fruit and a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me and every beast of the earth to every and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein is life I have given every green tree for me and it was so and God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good on day six it was very good everything that he had made right and the evening and the morning were the sixth day so, it, the things that God had made was very good. He didn't say that everything was good, uh, you know, without exception. Mm -hmm. Day seven. God had finished his work, and he rested from redoing heaven and earth on day seven. God blessed the seventh day and set it apart. That day was the Sabbath. God watered the plants with a mist because he had not sent rain. God yet... So, um, God had planned to move his house down to the earth the following Sabbath. Okay? So, that would be day 14. He planned to live with man, but God could not move down to earth because 
um, there was going to be trouble before he had a chance to get down on the 14th day. How did this trouble start on earth? In Genesis chapter 2, God now goes into more detail and tells us how he made the man. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, Genesis 2, 7. The nostrils are the holes in the nose. God himself came to earth to make man. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139, 14. God planted a garden in Eden, and there he put the man that he had made, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man that whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2, 8 and 9. God told Adam to keep the garden of Eden and to take care of it. God gave Adam one order. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou sh shalt surely die. I mean, God is very clear what will happen if he eats of that tree, right? Genesis 2, 16, 17. And the Lord God said, It is not good for man that, that he should be alone, I will make him a help meet for him. In Genesis 2.18, God let Adam name the animals. Adam had in mind the mind of God and named the animals just what God would have. Adam noticed that he was different from the animals. Adam was not an animal. None of them could be his help meet. He was a man made in God's image. God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he removed one of his ribs, and then he closed him up. Then God made a woman from the rib and brought her to Adam. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Genesis 2.24. God, God married them. Okay? God instituted marriage. He had instituted free will. Now he instituted marriage. God told Adam that if he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he would die. Adam told his wife what God said. Satan didn't want to be subdued by Adam. So Satan developed a plot to defeat Adam and retain the earth. Satan was sneaky. He used a serpent. Um, he was a serpent. Okay. To, um, and he talked to the woman. He approached her and not Adam. He said, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Genesis 3, 1. Satan questioned God's word. He made Eve doubt what God said. Satan, with one question to Eve, succeeded in tricking her. He fooled Eve unto, into thinking that she and Adam could be as gods. Satan lied to Eve. Okay, so I just want to say right here and right now that it is highly unlikely that the serpent talked to Eve. We find out from Paul that uh, Satan can masquerade as an angel of light. So it is most probable that Satan masqueraded as an angel of light when he came to Eve because um, that makes more sense. So, um, and the serpent said unto the woman, so serpent is his nature, okay? It is not he, uh, uh, what he looked like. Mm -hmm. um, ye shall not, uh, you know, he's a snake in the grass, okay? Mm -hmm. Ye shall not surely die. So here he's lying to, to Eve. He said, the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Satan said the opposite of what God had said. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Satan said that God knows you will be as God, and able to rule yourselves without God if you eat the, of the fruit. Eve did not say exactly what God had said, and so forth and so on. So she added some, and she took away freely, and she added the word touch. So, um... We know that the old servant of old 
in uh, Revelation 12, 9, was the one who lied. He tricked Eve into thinking that she and Adam could be as gods, just like Satan wanted to be like the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. That Eve would have a conversation with a literal serpent is unlikely. Satan did not appear to Eve as a serpent, but as an angel of light, as it says in 2 Corinthians 11, 14. 11, 14. He looked handsome like one of the good angels. Serpent is, his na is the nature of Satan, not his appearance. He is sneaky and treacherous like a snake in the grass. Christ called the religious leaders of Israel serpents and vipers mm -hmm. because that was the spirit operating in them. Okay, that wasn't them. That was the spirit operating in them. He said mm -hmm. in Matthew 23, 33, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Ye are of your father the devil, the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8, 44. Satan beguiled Eve. He dazzled her with his enticing words. Um, she was misled and tricked by the wiles of the devil. Eve fell for Satan's lie in three ways. Eve thought the fruit was good, looked like it would be good to eat. She thought the food looked interesting, and she wanted to be wise like God. She took of the fruit and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her who did eat. Genesis 3, 6. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. God's spirit in them died. The light inside them went out. They could tell that they were naked. Their bodies that were meant to live forever began to die. Adam and Eve lost the earth to Satan. He remained the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. But God says, all the earth is mine. In Exodus 19.5 Adam and Eve lost God's spirit in them. They lost their eternal life. They could not get God's spirit, his light, back in them by themselves. They could not live forever by themselves. They were helpless and hopeless. Only God could help them. Adam and Eve could not save themselves from the trouble they were in. God would have to do it. Both human good and evil are bad. We need God's good and right spirit in us. With the light gone, Adam and Eve saw that they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves aprons to cover them. Then God came as usual to walk and talk with Adam and Eve, and they heard him and hid themselves upon, among the trees. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Genesis 3.8 the Lord called to, unto Adam and asked, Where art thou? Genesis 3, 9. Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid my, thy, myself. Genesis 2, 10. God knew what had happened, but he wanted Adam and Eve to admit that they had done wrong. God asked them some questions. God's questions helped Adam and Eve to realize the wrong they had done. Instead of having a wonderful walk with God in the beautiful garden of Eden, they were scared, helpless, and hiding. God said, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee should not eat? Genesis 3.11 Adam blamed God and Eve, and Eve, saying, The woman thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Genesis 3.12 he, We often like to blame others. For the wrong things we do but we need to take responsibility for our actions adam did not did admit that he did eat he did disobey we must realize that we have wronged god so we see that we need to trust the solution god has for our problem and not ourselves and the lord god said unto the woman what hast thou done and the woman said the serpent beguiled or tricked me and i did eat Eve blamed the serpent, but she also admitted that she did eat. God said the serpent would have to eat dust. 
the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. Genesis 3.14 God didn't ask the serpent what, why he did what he did. God knew it was Satan because behind the serpent doing the evil. A sheriff has a cow or calf face. That is why God cursed him more than other cows. Revelation 4.7 The serpent has to eat dust and get around on his belly. God may have said that because he would spend eternity as a dust-eating worm like the rest of his followers. God promised that the Redeemer would come from the seed of a woman. The seed would crush Satan's evil head, killing him, so everything could be right again. Speaking to the serpent, God continued, And I will put enmity, which is war, between thee, the serpent, and the woman, between thy seed, the serpent, and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, the seed will crush the serpent's head, a blow that kills. And thou shalt bruise his heel, the serpent will hurt the seed's heel, from which he can recover. Genesis 3.15 God said that Eve would have pain when she had a baby, and that her husband would rule over her, because Adam had listened to Eve and ate of the tree that God said not to eat of. He had to work hard and sweat in order to have food to eat. The ground was cursed. From now on, weeds and thistles would grow in it. Everything God had made had to suffer because of what Adam and Eve did. Adam and Eve's aprons of leaves would not last. God killed some innocent animals and put their skins on Adam and Eve and their clothes, as their clothes. God spilled blood of innocent animals because of the wrong Adam and Eve did. Adam and Eve had to leave the garden um, of Eden, and God didn't want them to eat from another tree, um, the tree of life, and live forever as imperfect. God put some cherubs in a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way of, to the tree of life. Life without God was horrible and hard. Adam and Eve finally understood that God's rule was for their protection. They had to suffer because they did not stay within the limit God had set. They had followed Satan instead of God when they went against God's command. They had joined Satan and his darkness. They joined the rebellion. They should have known that only God is God. They could not be God. The Creator created them. They were made to live forever, but now they were dying. They lost his spirit in them and their eternal lives. They needed help. Was it too late for them? Adam and Eve believed God could keep his promise and send the seed of the woman to rescue them. Adam showed his faith when he called his wife Eve, the mother of all living, in Genesis 3.20. Adam believed that God could give them back the eternal life and God's spirit in them, which they had lost. Adam believed the seed would come through Eve as God had said, the mother of all living, right? God is very clear that Adam and Eve did not conceive until after they left the garden, Genesis 4.1. Look at Genesis 4.1. Eve showed her faith when she thought that Cain might be the redeemer. Eve said, um, okay, I, um, I have got, okay, let's look at Genesis 4.1, and I will read it to you. It says, And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So Adam and Eve had probably known each other and come together as husband and wife mm -hmm. from day one. Mm -hmm. But it's so important to understand that God has made the woman cycle so that she can only conceive for a 24-hour period on the 14th day since the first day of her last menstrual period. So um, Eve, here in, in Genesis 4-1, he said that this time that they came together, she conceived. And remember, they had left the garden, right? Mm -hmm. So she didn't conceive Cain until she was out of the garden. Hmm. 
So, um, sadly, Cain turned out to, uh, to be against God. He killed his faithful brother Abel, as we read in Genesis 4.8 and Hebrews 11.4. Cain was of that wicked one, as we're told in 1 John 3.12. What happened? Cain offered his very best <clears throat> vegetables and fruits to God, and Abel offered God his best lamb. God was happy with Abel's gift, but not with Cain's. Cain was mad. God warned Cain. Cain did not listen to God, and Cain killed Abel. So now we're going to talk about how Adam and Eve had more children. Later, Adam and Eve had Seth, and then they had more children because Adam lived 930 years, uh, to be 930 years old. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters, Genesis 5, 4. Because of their faith, Adam and Eve will live eternally in God's kingdom on earth. There is no point in trying to date what God has created because he made everything fully gr full grown and mature. We do not know how long in the beginning was. That's Genesis 1-1. How long that lasted. But we can say it's been nearly 6,000 years since Adam was created. Okay? So it's been nearly 6,000 years since Adam was created. Exactly when did Adam and Eve sin? When was the fall of man? Adam and Eve probably sinned not long after they were made, since they had not had any children. I heard Pastor Richard Jordan pinpoint the fall. And so I just want to get this uh, back. Patty, you don't have to go on me right now. Okay. I just want to get this little timeline back up here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to explain this little timeline here. All right, so we have um, the numbers here of creation. We have one, two, three, four, all the way up to 14. 14 was a day that God was going to um, have uh, come down to earth to live with uh, mankind on the earth. Okay, so we're going to pinpoint exactly when Adam and Eve sinned. Okay, so notice here the second row of numbers. Um, one is on day six when Adam and Eve were made. Mm -hmm. Then on um, when God rested, that was day two for them. And then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are going to sin on their eighth day of life. Which turns out to be Friday the 13th. Okay? Because Friday comes before the Sabbath, the Saturday, which is the 14th. Okay? And so they had to leave the garden on the, um, on the 13th day after creation or their eighth day of existence. So I'm going to go into that a little more in detail and then we'll finish up and be done. When was... Okay, so... In the, okay, so we've, we've done those, that. Okay, so um, notice that they caused the fall of mankind on Friday the 13th. Day 7 and 14 are Saturdays. The days before God planned to set up his tabernacle on the earth, the second Sabbath after the first, as is mentioned in Luke 6 1. Make sure you get that written down. Satan had probably been in a panic to cause man to fall before they had children who could live forever. How do you know this is true? So a woman's cycle is 28 days. She can become pregnant only on one day, the 14th day. And I was a nurse midwife, so I know all about this. Um, this is the day that her seed, the egg, is available. A man's seed, his sperm, can live for three to seven days. Adam and Eve had probably been together since God married them on day six of creation when they were first, she, uh, you know, he first brought her to him. But her seed had not been available yet. 
God tells us that after they left the garden, Adam knew his wife again, and they that that time his seed joined with hers. She had a baby inside her. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord, Genesis 4.1. So Eve thought that this was the Redeemer. So this, what she said, verifies that she trusted what God had said and mm -hmm. knew that, you know, now Adam and Eve were, you know, believing God mm -hmm. in what God said. So, in fact, their sin nature spread to all mankind. All humans are born as sinners. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, as it says in Romans 5.12. So what it says is we inherit the sin nature from our parents. So a little child knows how to sin from birth. We call all need a redeemer, um, a, uh, our savior, the savior. Okay, Adam and Eve finally trusted what God said. God was their only hope of being able to live with God forever. God had a plan not only to save them and anyone who believes what he said, but to get the earth back. Through Paul, we learn that Jesus Christ is the seed, thy seed which is Christ, Galatians 3.16. But God wrote the Bible a little at a time, so no one knew that for a long time. Although Adam and Eve failed to subdue the earth, the last Adam has succeeded. And, and we find that in, or will succeed, we should say. Um, because we find that in... Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 45, that, you know, everything's going to be put under his feet, and then he's going to offer everything to the Father, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ will. Paul told us when the Lord Jesus Christ will finally subdue all things. In the end, he will have put all enemies under his feet, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28. Jesus Christ will use the nation of Israel, his bride, that he will remake from the believing remnant, Peter and those, um, to help him subdue the earth. So, um, God will make his nation over from the believers that did trust in him when he sets up his kingdom on earth. Jesus Christ will use the body of Christ to help him subdue the heavenly places. What it, okay, so what is the last piece of the puzzle? I believe that in the end, God will hold all the believers in heaven and earth in the third heaven, while the rest of heaven and earth will be burned up. Perhaps this will be by the friction of eternity. God may remove most of the ice walls. Then God will make a new heaven and new earth. He will transport the kingdom on earth believers in the new Jerusalem to the new earth. God will remove the sea of glass, and there will be one heaven again with God living with his people. Darkness will be gone, because God is light. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Second Peter 3 12 through 13 so there will be only righteousness in the new heaven and new earth God removed the sea of ice and made one heaven again and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea so that was the sea that was the separation between um, you know the second heaven and the third heaven and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Revelation 21, 1 and 2. All the believers in heaven and earth will have God's spirit in them, his life and his light. His life and his light. Mm 
Um, and we will have these glorified bodies that will live forever. 1 John 3, 2, 4, 13, Romans 8, 9, Philippians 3, 21. God will rule over the earth through his nation, Israel, and over heaven through the body of Christ. All the Bible is for our learning, but all the Bible is not written directly to us or about us. Most of the Bible is written to and about the nation of Israel. Most of the Bible is about the king and his literal physical kingdom on the earth. The part of the Bible that is directly to and about the body of Christ are Paul's 13 letters. The letters all begin with Paul, Romans through Philemon. Since the present heaven and earth will be burned up, the goal of every person is to make sure that they will be in the new heaven and new earth. How do we get in there? By faith in what God tells us in the Bible. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Trust God now. We do not know how long it will be till the opportunity to live in heaven ends because it, it will end with the rapture, right? Because those believers go to heaven. It will um, um, be almost impossible to believe after the rapture. God's ultimate plan is that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Ephesians 1.10 The rest of God's plan for heaven and earth and about the seed will okay <clears throat> to quickly learn more and to fill in any holes that you might have in your understanding of what God has done is doing and will do you can read God's secret a primer with pictures for how to rightly divide the word of truth and then or you can read um, just as God said either in color or in black and white the red one is the color in black and white. This will give you a simplified um, version of God's secret. And um, those are available on Amazon, as are the notes from uh, today's. I put them in a book, and I call the book, mm -hmm. Why Was the Earth Without Form, Void, and Dark? And that's going to be on Amazon also. And um, that little book that has all the notes from today are uh, it, it's three ninety nine for the paperback with pictures um, in black and white, and then the Kindle is two ninety nine. But this Kindle mm -hmm. is not a version that can be listened to. This is just a Kindle for reading. So let's close with a word of prayer. Thank you, Holy Father God, in Jesus' name, that we were able to finish this lesson today. And I thank you for those who listened, and I pray that um, you will be exalted, your word will be glorified. Thank you that we're going to be glorifying you forever. And we thank you um, for your plan, and we thank you um, for your word that helps us to understand your plan. And we thank you that uh, we can edify one another in the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus name. amen. All right. Oh, wait, 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 girl. I just want to mention that next week we're not going to have a Bible study, but the following week we're going to be back on track going through Paul's epistles with First Thessalonians chapter 1. We'll cover that uh, in two weeks from today. Do you know what the date is of that? Well, today is um, the 10th. Mm -hmm. So, 14, 24th. The 24th, we will resume with First Thessalonians, going into a deeper edification process by going through Paul's epistles. Anything else? Any questions? Will it still be from 10 to 12? Yes. Same time, 10 to 12 on Thursdays. And uh, we thank you so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. And we hope that... This time has been of great value and blessing to you. See you mm -hmm. next in two weeks. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Did you share?